drilling, tapping, uh, you know, holes are on every part. Uh, we've always had two drill tool paths in Mastercam, right? There's the 2D drill and the multi-axis drill. And the main difference is whether it's all going to be like on a three-axis machine or whether it's going to be posted on a four or five-axis where it could index to a different direction. Um, so to give you some more flexibility, in Mastercam 2020, these two toolpaths have been consolidated into one just drill toolpath. Um, if you need to change which direction you drill the hole or you need to update and, and kind of drill off, off center or you want to do it as a, a multi-axis, it's just a setting now. It's not a completely different toolpath. Uh, there's a lot of other really cool things with holes that I want to walk through. So let's take a look. The first thing is uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of illustrate it by center drilling some of the holes I have here. So if you look, the multi-axis drill toolpath is gone. So don't freak out. It's just over there in the 2D area. With the 2D toolpath, I can come in and grab the point, the edge, or in this case, I'm going to grab the surface. Uh, I'm going to grab each one one at a time. By the way, uh, Control Select or Alt Select, I need to look that up, uh, does grab uh, all similar sizes and orientations. See these arrows? You click the arrow, it directs it the other way, but the arrows are showing which direction you plan to drill this from. So if you see the one on the far left here, I want to drill it from the back side because I'm going to have better clearance that way. And the other ones I'm going to drill from the top and then the, the, the last one is coming from the back. These uh, holes or these, these uh, uh, arrows, uh, because I picked the solid geometry, not only are they going to set where the whole orientation is and what direction I'm drilling from, it's also going to recognize the top and bottom. So the depth of the hole is going to be uh, kind of taken care of intelligently as well. All right, so let's jump in and look. I've got uh, just a center drill ready to go. And I want to do on this tool axis control. This is where kind of the magic happens. This is where they combined those two tool paths. You've got three, four, and five axis output formats. You choose whether or not, uh, how, you know, how it's going to be posted out, and that sets the orientation. Now keep in mind, if this is a three axis, then the arrows uh, are going to be displayed, but it's only going to have the ability to drill from one direction. So in the parameters page for planes, that's where it's going to be setting uh, the orientation and it's all going to be drilled based on that. But if you do four or five axis, the individual hole tool plane uh, is set per hole by the geometry of the hole itself. And then it just indexes to the correct location to drill that. All right, a couple things on linking parameters. I've got an option here to calculate increment or values from the holes or lines for the retract uh, and clearance. What that means is I choose how high to retract based on the top of each hole. So if you've got a part with a lot of vertical relief, you don't have to retract to the top of the highest hole. Now the depth can be calculated from the top of the hole as well. Now if you think about that, right, normally uh, with a multi-axis, you'd pick the, the, the geometry of the hole and that would set the depth. But for this operation, for this uh, center drilling operation, I only want to go just a little bit down, and I want to go in from the top down a certain amount. So when I say calculate depth from the top of the line of the hole, it says I don't care how deep it's going to be, just spot it for now 5 millimeters. All right, so as I said, my, my planes and the parameter, that's going to be ignored because this is a multi-axis, and so it's going to be set by the arrows per hole. All right. Let's back plot this, see how we did. So once we start playing it, it looks like the first spot is good, and then the second one just kind of shoots right through the middle of my part. All right, so um, I mean, I'm sort of getting there. Let's, let's go take a look. Um, there is an area here called safety zone. And when you enable the safety zone, you get to choose the shape, the size, and everything else double click or box select the part and it just creates kind of a best fit box or best fit cylinder. And notice how I can just click and drag these boundaries out to increase the size of the safety zone. I like doing that to uh, kind of clean up, you know, 
reduce that pucker factor you get when they first run the very first machine. But now, notice how it goes around that safety zone automatically. So your drilling operation, whether it's multi-axis or not, is going to make sure not to hit anything in that safety zone. All right, so let's do another one. Now that we've got them center drilled, I want to um, drill through all these holes. There's three holes here that are the same size. So when I go in and I grab these holes, I know they're the same size because, take a look, we're on the left-hand side, it shows you the diameter. So I click OK to grab them all, and I've already got a tool ready to go for that particular size. It's already in my holder. I'm kind of planning on this one being there. And I'm going to peck drill this one. So we'll do the first peck is five, then after that we'll do two millimeters. And the depth, we want it to be set to the same depth as the hole depth. So we put it as zero on the depth, and then we turn on tip comp, and that allows me to automatically calculate how deep I've got to go to fully clean out the bottom of this hole. So you don't have to set the depth of the hole or go measure the depth of the hole. It knows how deep the hole is, and then if it's a through hole, you can use tip comp to ensure sufficient breakthrough on that angled tip. All right, the, uh, the safety zone is in, inherited from the previous one. So when I back plot this one, we'll take a look. It notice now it's pecking in the back plot. Now that not used to not happen. You used to not be able to see the pecking behavior in the back plot. It would just look the same as every other one. So now you get a lot more clarity, and you can kind of S and B. S and B on your keyboard will allow you to go forward and back so that you can analyze each peck and understand more clearly what the final output is. So this one looks really good. I'm feeling pretty good about this drilling toolpath. Let's take a look at one more example, or at least one more thing you might want to do with holes. This fixture plate, this is the one we did the engraving on earlier, has a bunch of holes. These are M16 tapped holes, but they did M6 or 16 millimeter uh, nominal holes on the CAD model. And this is not my CAD model. It was imported, so it's a brick model. It's a dumb solid with no feature history. But I want to change it so that I don't accidentally drill this thing at 16 millimeter through, which would then scrap the fixture. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the command add history. Now add history used to be called uh, find features. Yeah, find features. <laughs> Think about that one for a second. And what it does is it goes through and kind of reverse engineers the, the geometry. And the most common things you'll use these for, really the main things you'll use these for, is fillets and holes. So if you've got a bunch of fillets that you want to either get rid of or change the size of or anything else, you can go in and find them all. They become features, solid features that then can be modified. In this case, I want to grab all the holes and reverse engineer them as hole operations. And when I do that, it's going to grab everything within the minimum and maximum size that I've selected on the radius, and then uh, they become part of the feature tree. So this used to be a dumb solid. Now I have these intelligent features. I'm going to double click this one because these are not you know, 16 millimeter through holes. These are uh, metric tap drills through all. I'm going to use these templates to find the M16 tapped hole. And notice it even does a nice job, let me regenerate this, it does a nice job of even uh, showing uh, a nice little chamfer there. Uh, so it gives me just exactly what I'm looking for, fits my, my standard functionality as if I modeled it myself. So that's perfect, right? Now I can go in and I can drill it. But if I need to go in later and do like a thread mill, right? I go grab the geometry for my thread mill, it now wants the nominal OD of the threads, not the tap drill size. So if you go into the cut parameters, you can now override that geometry diameter and say this is an ID thread, but I, the, the size of the drill is not what drives the OD of the thread. The thread is an M16. 
So the major thread diameter can be input, and then the thread will be cut exactly the way I want it. Now this is a problem I kind of created myself, but what you want to do is work whatever is comfortable for you, right? If you're always using tap drills, then you're going to expect to need to override that on the mill, uh, the, the thread mill if you're if you're doing a thread mill. So we cancel that out, and I want to do one more thing on this one. There's a whole table command. It used to be an add-in. I don't know if you ever had played with it, but the whole table add-in is now a whole table command, and it has a bunch of options that are now available to make creating a whole table much better and easier. So you can move the table exactly where you want it. You can specify how the hole, the labels, the holes are labeled, whether they're grouped or not. Um, you can display it as a diameter or a radius. You can set the height of the text. The locations are, are, can be measured either relative to the construction plane, the WCS, world coordinates, you name it. Um, but that information, documenting it and getting it to your machinist is now going to be a lot easier because that whole table command is a full command in Mastercam. So a little recap of all the things we saw with holes. The multi-axis and the 2D drills are now combined into just one drill toolpath. The orientation is set with the arrows for the multi-axis so that you don't, uh, you know, uh, you know exactly how it's going to be. It's very easy to visually see what's going on. By the way, if you have any existing toolpaths uh, from previous versions, go back and look. You can now see where those arrows are. You may need to adjust them if you're making any changes. The peck is shown in the back plot, although it could be turned off if uh, if it's taking too long to sit there and peck at all. Um, it just gives you a lot more the opportunity to see a lot more clarity in what you're doing. Add history it allows you to back calculate holes and fillets on dumb geometry, so that you can get intelligent features off of things that maybe weren't your model originally. The override geometry allows you to to override whatever the selected hole geometry is and specify the thread diameter or the OD of the hole that fits your need. So you don't it doesn't have to you don't have to create wireframe geometry that fits the size you need. You can simply grab the geometry you have and work with it from there. Even if there's like a chamfer on the edge, you get to choose what you want. And that whole table is a really powerful way to document and send out that information to people.